My name is Dr. Herzog. I'm a cardiologist with cardiovascular specialists of Central Maryland and Columbia, Maryland, and Howard County General Hospital, which is a part of Johns Hopkins. So, Instent is a small medical device. It's a metal tube with slots in it, which can be compressed onto a balloon and then expanded once it's inside the body. It's used to treat blockages or partial obstructions of coronary arteries. Um, this is typically the, needed when someone has a restriction to blood flow in the coronary artery and that can cause symptoms such as chest pain with exertion. Uh, the other time in which we use it is when a patient presents with an acute heart attack and in that instance the artery is typically blocked by blood clot and underlying cholesterol a buildup called plaque and we open the artery with a balloon and then follow the balloon by implanting a stent which helps the artery to stay open over a long period of time. The basic problem usually is restriction of blood flow so that when a patient exercises, they cannot deliver enough blood to their heart muscle and they feel that as pain or sometimes as shortness of breath. There are generally three options. Uh, first, we do a diagnostic angiogram, see how severe a blockage is, how many blockages there are, how many arteries are involved, and depending on those results, uh, we have three options to choose from. First is medical therapy, uh, which can be appropriate if the blockages are not very severe, or if the blockages are not in a place where we can readily work on them with angioplasty, but not severe enough that would require surgery. The second option is stenting, which we've talked about already. Uh, the third option is bypass surgery, which is generally performed in patients that have three arteries with partial blockages, sometimes patients that have complete blockages of certain arteries. Generally, bypass surgery is reserved for those patients that have the most severe disease. Uh, it is very successful. It is also more commonly used in patients that have diabetes. Stent procedures are typically performed in larger hospitals, one that have surgeons on site that can do cardiac surgery. The reason for that is there's a very small risk whenever you do a stent or a balloon angioplasty that the artery may collapse and we may not be able to get it back open again and bypass surgery may be required on an emergent or urgent basis. Uh, that is rare and since the advent of stents it's become much less rare but still most Angioplasty and stenting is still performed in the larger hospitals that have that surgical backup. <clears throat> there is another instance uh, which comes up, which is when patients present with acute heart attacks. And in that instance, the state of Maryland will give us a waiver to perform angioplasty and stenting in the local hospital even without the surgical backup. In those cases, we make arrangements with larger hospitals for rapid transpo transport if the patient would require bypass surgery. Recovery process after stent is typically very quick. The patient's in the hospital usually for one night stay usually go home the next day, typically by mid-afternoon or sometimes earlier. There is some restriction on vigorous physical activity. We don't want them climbing a lot of stairs for about three days after the procedure, riding a bicycle, things like that. But after three days, we tell patients they can do whatever they want to do.
usually after a stent, there is uh, continuing treatment, and that can be divided into two segments. One is treatment related to the stent itself, and then treatment related to the underlying coronary artery disease. Stents are metal, and they are considered foreign body by the body, the body reacts to it, so it reacts to that by forming blood clots. So to prevent the formation of blood clots within the stent, patients are asked to take aspirin every day, really for the rest of their life. In addition to that, they take another drug, which is an antiplatelet drug, which may be Plavix or Effient, and that drug is intended to also help prevent blood clots. Usually that drug can be stopped after one year. By that time, the stent uh, has been in place long enough that there is a lining inside the stent so that it's no longer so likely to have blood clots. Uh, with respect to the underlying coronary artery disease, we still ask patients to modify their lifestyle. Uh, often patients require medicines to keep their cholesterol low enough, to keep their blood pressure low enough. We ask people to stop smoking if they're smoking. All those things are designed to prevent the progression of disease so that they don't require another stent.